Hi folks, today is Tuesday, July 7th, and you will receive this uh, tomorrow morning, July 8th. Um, as of July 8th, we will implement our new guidelines um, that allow for some um, reduced uh, restrictions in the ability to come and go on campus and certain activities on campus. Uh, we put out a memo last week with a bunch of detail, chart. We'll have another memo that goes out today on, on July 8th. Um, with some additional charts that just give you a sense of risk categories, um, ways to think about um, what life is like outside of, of our Riverwoods campuses um, going forward. What I want to do today is um, talk really, since we put out the memo um, last week, uh, we've heard from many of you, uh, folks who are um, super concerned about more people coming and going from campus and the risks that that may um, increase. And also for the last several months, we've been hearing from many of you who um, really very much want a reduction in the restrictions and the ability to come and go um, with more or with, with fewer um, limitations. And what I thought was important to talk about today um, is really both of those perspectives. So in, in a minute, I'll just kind of talk to each one of those groups, what I call kind of stayers and goers. Um, but the first thing I would ask you to do is, is to keep in mind that um, there's just no right answer. There's no one right answer uh, with this virus. And our, our whole goal is to find balance um, between life and health and community. Um, and the fear that we have and what we can live with and how we can manage our lives going forward. Because the reality is we're gonna to have to live alongside this virus for a while. So what I would ask you to do um, for folks who are, are uh, really focused on, on um, staying is try to understand the perspective of the goers and the folks who are really um, focused on kind of getting out and having some more freedoms. And really understand what your neighbors who are, um, who are concerned about safety and, and risk, what they're thinking. Uh, so just start with a few facts to start. And our, our process has been to use data, not emotion, to make these decisions because um, there's so much emotion around this and there really is no one right answer. But for the last several months, we've been watching data. And what we really focus on are active cases and new cases. And what we're seeing in um, New Hampshire is real progress. The number of um, average cases, so we look at a seven day average, average new cases per day in New Hampshire is down to about 23 over the course of the last seven days. And that's stayed that way. Um, a week back, it was about 27. A week before that, it was about 30. In late May, it was 90. So we're making real progress there. Uh, Manchester and the other Hillsborough County hotspots, their numbers are coming down. They were up over uh, 300 in, in various communities, and Manchester's down to 123 active cases today. The seacoast towns are staying steady. Um, so that's those are all bits of data that tell us we're moving in the right direction locally. We're, we've not been untouched, um, but we have been able to contain the impacts for us. So. Um, in all of that data, that tells us that we're able to, to take these steps to open up a little bit more, that the risk for folks going out locally is, is pretty small. Now, as the world opens up, you, you kind of can't watch TV or read the newspaper without um, hearing what's going on in other states. 37 other states um, are seeing an increase in cases. Some of them are states like... Um, Vermont and Maine, uh, they're going up, but they're going up from very small numbers. So, you know, that's less of a risk. But other states were seeing, you know, case counts just absolutely exploding. So in 37 states, case counts are going up. In 12 states, case counts are, are fairly flat. And then there's New Hampshire. Uh, we're the only state in the nation. So New Hampshire and the Washington, D.C. Um, we're the only places where case counts are going down. So... Um, not sure what that means. Um, either we're smarter than the rest of the nation um, or we're a little lucky for right now. Um, but those are that's data that we need to continue to track. So as we said, you know, our process has been to use data. And 
what we said um, a month ago was we would open up more when we were confident that the cases in New Hampshire were dropping, that they were dropping on a, on a um, uh, continual basis, and that we could feel that our risk of local travel was was limited. Um, and, we, and we're there now. So what I want to do is just, you know, take a minute and talk to folks, goers, you know, people who want out. Um, it's been four months since this started. You've had a limited ability to see your friends and your family. You might have other homes. Um, you have other activities that have been a part of your life. And many of those are, are really low risk. You might be a hiker or a runner or a, a golfer. And you, you want out. And what I would ask you to think about um, is just all of the ways you can be safe. You know, one thing um, we said to our staff is hey, you haven't done anything for four months. No need to do everything all at once. Um, do as little as possible, actually. Do very little. Um, see your family if they're, if they're safe. Uh, go golfing or go for a hike or kayak. Outside things. Outside's always better than inside. Moving is always better than stationary. But also know that your neighbors are really concerned. Um, they're worried about people coming and going on campus. And what you can do to help um, up alleviate that worry is wear your mask, always. You know, keep six foot social distance. If you're gonna be coming and going from campus, you have an even more important um, uh, responsibility to have your mask on when you're around others. And if you're uh, a, fo uh, a person, uh, if you're a stayer, you know, if you're concerned about this, um, I want you to know we hear you. We, we've heard from many of you over the course of the last week. Um, we hear your concerns. We'll continue to watch the data. You can keep your risk low um, by doing a few things. Keep your social circle small. Wear your mask. Keep your six foot social distance. You know, wash your hands. Um, and the other thing is remind other people. So we, all of us have a responsibility if someone is not wearing their mask properly, if they're wearing it below their nose, um, you know, remind them it has to be up over your nose. If they're not wearing a mask at all, let them know that um, they're not and they need to be. Um, if your mask isn't fitting you right, if your mask is flopping down, go to the front desk and get a new one. Um, ask your executive director. We'll, we'll find you a way to uh, have a mask that fits you more properly. So the last thing I want to say is, you know, this decision to, to relax our guidelines, that's the decision for now. It's based on the data that we're seeing for now. It's based on where New Hampshire is. It's based on where um, the other New England states are. If that information changes, we will change too. I, you know, this is, um, I sure hope that we continue on in a, in a positive trajectory in our state. Um, but if that isn't the case, we'll tighten back up. Right now, we believe the risk to be fairly small for local travel. There's many things that you can do outside. Uh, there's many things that you can do that have really very low risk. But everything you can do to limit that risk, you should. So if you're gonna leave campus, um, contactless pickup if you're shopping, takeout orders. Restaurants and bars, I, I don't know why you'd be going out into bars anyway, but um, they're a really bad idea. Don't do, don't do that. Don't be around other people that you don't know. Don't be around large groups of people, even if you do know them. It just increases the risk. So everything we can do to act thoughtfully about our community. Think about every choice you make impacts not only you, but also your neighbor, also your friends and do as little as possible as you can do for now to allow you to have more freedoms, um, more fun in your life, but live alongside the virus in a way that is as limited at risk as possible. So um, guidelines go into effect on July 8th. Um, hopefully we won't have to change them back, but we'll keep you posted. And um, till then, wash your hands, stay six, stay six feet apart, um, and wear your mask.